Hello and welcome to my review of Yamaha P515 Portable Piano. I would like to begin by telling you that I'm a classically trained pianist and I will discuss certain features of this instrument that are of interest to me and I find helpful to know before buying something like this. And if you have other questions about this instrument that I didn't cover some features and you really want to know, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll be happy to help you and tell you about those features as well, if I am good enough in those. I will start with action, because action is of interest to everyone who is buying an instrument you're going to play on. Um, this one is really good because it has the white keys made out of wood. However, the black keys are not made out of wood. So just so you know, when it says wooden keys, it's only related to the white keys. The question here is, a lot of people are wondering whether it makes a difference in touch between the black and the white keys since they're not made of the same material. To me, I didn't feel any difference. Chromatic, no difference, and then no difference in sound either. I'm not adjusting how I play from white to black, it's the same way, so... Later, I demonstrate by playing chromatic scale throughout the keyboard. You will hear that. Um, no difference. If I play double stop, same thing. No difference. So all chords, any kind of technique is possible. Uh, no problem between the black and the white keys. Uh, in terms of how sensitive the action is, it's pretty great. Uh, I will also demonstrate it by playing from the softest to the loudest and back to the softest on the same key. Let's say I'm going to choose uh, G here. So I'm going to start very soft and I have it as a sound sample. So the gradation from the softest to the loudest that is responding to your touch is large, which is great to play something with a lot of nuance. I like that a lot. Uh, and the last thing about uh, action, what I would like to mention is the um, allowance of the double repetition. It's the ability of the key to bounce back pretty quickly so you can repeat one note really, really rapidly. So something like this. Of course, it needs to be trained by your finger as well. But... And same thing is possible on the black key. Moving on, sound. So the sound here that I'm gonna discuss relates to mainly to those two samples of the great acoustic pianos that are CFX Grand by Yamaha and the Bösendorfer Imperial, now owned by Yamaha as well. There is a huge difference in the character of sound of these two instruments. I am inserting here um, chromatic scale played by Yamaha first, up and down the whole uh, keyboard, and B across the registers for you to hear how it sounds.
And now just to tell you a few words, what do I mean by separates the registers in terms of Bösendorfer? If I play something on it, something like this, right? So here. Especially here. It has a certain very deep sound quality, dark, deep, beautiful. And here's the middle register. register it has a big break between the registers that's what I mean so up to here it's one kind of sound here kind of different and then Right here, I would say it's lacking the edge. It's my personal opinion. Please, lovers of the Bösendorfer, don't get offended. I just find that Yamaha has more color to it, especially in the middle register. Going back to the Yamaha, just to show you, here's the low register of Yamaha. And it's also a bit more, has a bit more power, if you can pay. I didn't change anything here, by the way. I'm playing in, right in the middle of the volume No. Middle. It uh, just retains that brightness and all the other qualities, just the pitch changes, but... Next one, and then here. Should I play? and new ones compare to the Bösendorfer. And Bösendorfer, again, one more time, I'll play just the C scale. It changed the color completely. Moving on. All right, here is something about how to record and what possibilities you have. So. We are on the work. I'm gonna to switch to CFX and I'm gonna click record here. And it starts counting only when I start playing something. Let's say I play something. Let's see. And let's say I didn't like it. If I didn't like it, I'm gonna press record again. And it offers me safe or retry or cancel. I'm gonna say retry. So I don't have to save every single thing I play, which is great because other instruments, my previous one didn't allow that feature. So now I'm gonna play something else. Let's say, right? And by the way, the trill shows you. same way um, so record again and yes I will save and that will save it saving to user if I didn't like it let's say there's user song 46 and I actually don't like it anymore well I decided I don't want it anymore. Delete. Execute. Cancel. Execute. Executing. Completed. Easy. Very easy. You don't have to rewrite over to delete a track. You just delete whatever you want. So you insert a flash drive and then you usually have this in the beginning. So you're going to have to go to your demo song 
and we're gonna see what I'm doing using here. So this is user, so you're gonna choose user, and then you have the list of songs that you have or pieces that you recorded. I need the number 33, so which is here. I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna click function, and under function, you go to file, and you go to move, To the USB and then you're gonna click execute here if you do that you will have the MIDI file moved to your USB because everything that's being recorded directly onto this machine sorry I'm calling it the machine that's actually an instrument but it has a computer inside so the computer records it as a MIDI file in that file you could for example transfer it to your logic you can use it directly as a information source to work with in logic. As so if I wanted to have a WAV file instead of MIDI, what I'm gonna need to do is, same thing here, so you're still under song, and you go to file, like we did before, and then where we had move before, and now we're gonna go down, and there is MIDI to audio. So you're gonna click that, MIDI to audio, and there you have execute and by the way if your volume is normal like mine here for example here you will have your file playing through while it's executing so if you don't want that you can just go ahead and go down in your volume here so let's say execute and it's gonna play whatever I recorded and if I go down in volume then I don't hear that but it's still recording so it's converting to audio when it's done converting you're gonna have the audio wave file here if you don't do that, again, you're going to have a MIDI file. And while we're at it, just letting you know, I didn't find any special way of ejecting the drive. There is no function, I didn't find at least, to eject the drive here in, in this little computer. So what I do, I just simply unplug it after I'm done. If you guys found a way, if there is a way to tell it to disconnect, the drive before you remove it, please let me know because maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I couldn't find anything. Uh, some, somebody asked if you can use this as a MIDI keyboard. Yes, you can. There, um, there is a cord like this you can purchase. I haven't tried with Bluetooth, to be honest. That feature, I'm not sure if you can connect it through Bluetooth to your computer, perhaps possible. I'm old school, I have this cord. This side goes into your computer and these two go on the back here. So there is an opening for that. Um, and this will make it serve as a MIDI keyboard and you're connected to Logic or whatever DOS system you're using. Um, and again, using this flash drive, you can also transfer your uh, sound files in a MIDI format directly to Logic or Finale, whatever you're using. Um, and also you can save them as a sound file, as a WAV file on your flash drive, as I mentioned before. Okay, moving on, changing the settings. For example, you want to adjust the response level of the key, adjust the touch. So how do we do that? That's actually pretty easy. I'm going to record that as well. So. We're going back to piano room. Okay. So if you want to change the touch response, you go to piano room and then you choose brightness. You can, by the way, increase the brightness if you want. Uh, here is the touch. So right now I play on medium, just let's say five notes. There's a medium loud, right? And that's a forte, here we go. I'm gonna change the touch to hard. That's the maximum. Or fixed, I don't want fixed. Hard to. Fixed means it's gonna give you no response whatsoever. So hard, meaning that you will need more effort to make it respond to you. Which means I'm gonna play the same exact way I did before. Do you hear that the sound is muffled? Because I now require more strength to produce a louder sound. However, the quiet sound becomes easier to produce on the hard touch. 
if I need to play loud, I have to exert more force. And of course, the opposite is, oops, yeah, you have to get used to it, uh, is true for soft. That's the softest, soft two. So if I play the same way I did before, see how much louder the sound is? Now it's easier to play loud, it's a light key, but it's harder to play soft. If I want to play soft, I really need to work hard with my fingers to make it sound soft. And again, there is also something in between, soft one and medium. I prefer medium and sometimes hard one, but if you want to challenge yourself and really see what your fingers are capable of without changing the way the key responds, then try it on medium. Okay, here's another setting that I like to play around with, and it's called half pedal, half pedal point. What is half pedal, really? It's when we try to catch the resonance of the nose, but not the full muddy one, but a little bit less, so halfway maybe. So let's say we play something very, very loud. I know, like a... So full pedal, we're going to do big chord, full pedal. Now I'm going to do the same thing and do half pedal only. It clears out half the notes kind of immediately which creates a thinner layer of mud, in a way, if you can uh, describe it that way, or something that's less heavy in texture, or something like this, I don't know, um, full pedal first. And something half pedal. It gives you less resonance, one more something else. Full pedal, half pedal. It gives you a very different effect. If you're sensitive with your ear, you can hear that and it's a great color to add. And now I'm gonna show you how to change that half pedal point and what it really does, that change. So we have to go back to your piano room. That's the button you're gonna use a lot. And by the way, do you see that lid position? That's pretty cool that you can actually control. You can do half position and close position and it imitates the closing of the lid pretty closely. So if you wanna practice scales and you don't wanna bother your neighbors or roommates too much, you might wanna close your lid. Uh, Okay, here we go. Certain. Oh, by the way, a bunch of different reverb settings which are making a difference when you play it. It's surprisingly quite a big difference. Uh, okay. And all oh, of this is great. Damper resonance, you can choose string resonance. You can choose many, many things. Body resonance. I tried to, uh, changing those. It makes a, a little difference, but. I didn't explore it too much. Ah, half pedal point minus two. Ah, that's why I wonder. Okay, so half pedal, if it's zero, it's just normally halfway. If you move it to plus, that means your half pedal point becomes closer to the top. That means you have to press a little bit less than halfway to get the halfway effect. It's already halfway. If I'm gonna put minus, this is why it was giving me a hard time before because it was set to minus two, that means I have to press deeper to get the half pedal effect. It's going down. Right, so if I just press a little bit, I don't catch it because I moved my half pedal point down. That's minus. But if you just leave it on the zero, that's about halfway. Half pedal. It's called the rhythm and the complement. What is great about this feature, I find, especially when I teach little kids, they get all excited that 
they can have a little band playing with them and the band is going to actually catch your harmony catch your notes and do it together with you so let's say i put, press the rhythm here and it gives me there are many different options so beat number one let's say right so if i play anything i want let's say i want to change the beat to waltz jazz waltz one two three one two three one do i say this and change the way he plays faster or slower for rhythm I'm gonna go metronome he's at 120 right now I can make him go faster sets about I don't know, 20 of them or something of the rhythms which are great to play with if you want to have fun and yes of course you can split your keyboard and there are other instruments which are quite good quality for example organ there is a nice organ principle that you can do Support. It's quite nice. What's with this one? And there's another one. That one's a bit more aggressive. I like this one better. So that's the harpsichord. And of course, you can split the keyboard. Let's say I have harpsichord here and the strings. Ah, that's a dual split. That one does both. So I, I play a duet at the same time. So right here is about the split point. I have acoustic bass here and there are the strings on the top. I'm not a fan of strings, but let's change it to organ. So here is acoustic bass. Up to the G and here's... This acoustic bass is actually pretty cool. A couple of the last things overall about the quality of it. It's very durable so far. I haven't had any problem with durability. And I do practice on it quite a lot. On average about four hours a day and then i had it for about three months um speaker power is pretty good so maximum so i played on medium and the maximum if i play forgive me my roommate wait let me change back to the piano room to the piano that's the maximum and the medium is here and I'm playing like mezzo forte. I can still play forte on this. Right? Okay, so the speakers are good, but you can also, of course, uh, just plug it into external speakers if you want more power. You could use both at the same time, these and externals, or just externals. If you want to use just externals, just make sure there is a function here to turn off the speakers. You can do that too. Um, uh, in terms of 
stand. If you are not gonna get the um, home bundle with the three pedal unit and the home stand, if you're getting um, a separate stand, I recommend definitely a double braced or a Z-shape because on a single braced stand, it's gonna just be wobbly. Last thing, um, something was an issue with this piano. I'm being honest here. I did not work for Yamaha or anything, so I'm just being honest. What happened is I had a defective key, one of the black ones. It, it was not in place properly. And I had um, called Yamaha and they were really, really good about it. They were quick to respond. They were nice. They wanted to ask me if I wanted to exchange. And since this instrument is hard to find nowadays, I said that I have nothing to exchange it for. So they gave me a really excellent technician who knew exactly what to do, how to do it. We actually pulled it apart completely. So I saw what's inside of it. It's pretty solidly built, I have to tell you that. And he fixed it, no problem. That was just a matter of gluing it back together. However, there was one issue that still remains that hasn't been fixed yet, but there is a way around it. I'll tell you about it. So this key here, the G6, in the Yamaha sample, and also, funny enough, in the Bösendorfer as well, For those of you who are sensitive to hear that, for some of you might not bother. Like I just have very sensitive ears and unfortunately that bothers me that G is uneven. It stands out, it's a bit metallic in quality compared to the keys around it. play loudly that G really stands out and the way around it is actually well if you want to use your headphones you know that this has a binaural sampling you might already uh, read about this feature on the description on somewhere on the internet binaural sampling means it just samples the sound from uh, multiple points in the room it becomes like a rounder defi more defined like a 3d and to get that sound you only get it through headphones so if you have a headphones, like this thing, by the way, regular headphones are not going to fit, so you have to have this kind of jack. So what you can do is actually trick this piano. You can put this, turn off your speakers, don't plug in the headphones, just plug in this, this jack, and then turn off the speakers, plug in external speakers, and that way you will get the sound from the binaural sampling um, bi sound bank. And that will bypass this ugly G here if it really bothers you and if you have the same issue. Because to my understanding, it's the issue of actual um, original sampling of the piano, unfortunately. So that cannot be fixed um, mechanically. It has to be a firmware that has to be changed. And until they update it, we are kind of stuck with this G. Unless I'm wrong, let me know if you don't have the problem with the G. Uh, maybe it's something to do with my instrument, but as far as I know, that's. How we fix it is we plug in this thing, turn off these speakers, and we plug in externals. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. I will include a little snippet of the ballad in G minor by Frédéric Chopin, just to show you the nuances that this CFX grant can do. And you can do with your fingers if you so desire. In terms of um, this piano being a good investment, I definitely think so. And if you're considering purchasing this piano versus um, the ES8, I think it's called by Kawaii, or uh, an FB90 by Roland, I definitely go for this. ES8 is not a bad instrument, it's quite nice, but it's again a matter of taste. Kawaii is a bit mellower. And uh, that Roland, to be honest, I found it a completely dead instrument. The reason is uh, I wasn't able to communicate with it at all. It didn't respond to my emotions at all because of this, uh, the way it's 
constructed, the sound is actually generated by the computer, is synthesized sound rather than sampled from a real instrument, and that makes a huge difference. I originally wanted to buy the Roland, but then when I tried it, I said no. Um, so yeah, this is, and by the way, if some of you don't have access to a piano like this in the store, because a lot of them are missing right now in the US, maybe the situation has changed since I bought it, but I couldn't find any. But what I did is I was <laughs> kind of tricked it because um, Clavinova 645 has the same action as this. So what I did, I went to the store, I tried the Clavinova in terms of action. It's exactly the same instrument, except the costs more than twice as much. And the cabinet is wooden. The cabinet is wonderful, but if you want something cheaper and portable on top of it, this is your go-to. So try that action there on 645, they're usually available. And this is gonna be what you get here. All right, so good luck finding one if you're looking for one and if you already have one, enjoy. Thanks for watching.